What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Guns N' Roses True Story and today we're going to be talking about the much requested song My World. Now My World is definitely a song that a lot of people don't associate with the words good, excellent, masterpiece, but let's take a look at it anyways. And this was an episode that a few of my subscribers requested, so I'm going to take a look at this song, largely because it's so different than a lot of other songs that we've heard from Guns N' Roses. So My World actually appeared on Use Your Illusion 2. It was the last track on the album, and the sole writing credit was credited to Axl Rose. Now, many people listen to the song, and they think it's definitely a foreshadowing of what Axl wanted to do with Guns N' Roses. Uh, you know, at the time, people may have not known it, but Axel was hugely influenced by bands like Nine Inch Nails. In, In fact, fa uh, Nine Inch Nails opened for Guns N' Roses for two shows as part of the User Illusion tour uh, when Guns were touring Europe when Izzy was still in the band. And it was sort of towards the tail end when Izzy was about to leave the band and play his last few shows. So Nine Inch Nails opened the show in Mannheim, Germany back in August of 91, and then of course Izzy's last show at, in uh, London at Wembley Stadium in 1991. And sure enough, uh, Trent Reznor was asked about his worst show he ever played with Nine Inch Nails, and he brought up the opening gigs for Guns N' Roses. You know, when Nine Inch Nails opened for Guns N' Roses back in 91 for those two dates, they were not well received at all. I mean, if it was maybe 1994 and Guns was touring, maybe they would have been better received. But here's what Trent Reznor said. So Trent Reznor was uh, being interviewed by Q Magazine, and he told him that supporting Guns N' Roses was the worst shows Nine Inch Nails ever played. He said it was only a couple of shows, and they were some of the worst performances we, referring to Nine Inch Nails, had ever done in front of the most hostile, moronic audiences I've ever experienced, he recalled. They were, ready, they were there to rock. What they didn't want was some homo-looking dudes playing noisy synths, and they made it very clear to us. Our first show in Mannheim, Germany, there were thousands of people standing there, raising their middle fingers, and there were bits of sausage on the stage. I've tried to block it out. But it was definitely foreshadowing of what was to come when Guns N' Roses would later break up, and Robin Fink, who at one point was in Nine Inch Nails, would eventually join Axl Rose's version of Guns N' Roses. And then it was also rumored before that that uh, former Nine Inch Nails drummer Chris Vienna was also auditioning with Axl Rose back in 1997 or 1998. And then in an interview that Axel gave in 1993 to Hit Parader magazine, he was actually asked about which musicians would he love to collaborate with on like a solo project. And Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails was one of them, and Dave Navarro from Jane's Addiction was another guy he wanted to work with. He said he had actually talked to Trent Reznor about working with him on, on an industrial synth project, or at least one song, and he definitely wanted to work with Dave Navarro on something. He said he would be very curious to see what it would sound like with Dave and Slash on something. Of course, if you guys didn't know, Dave Navarro at one point was supposed to be Izzy Stradlin's replacement, but he was going through a terrible drug addiction at the time and never even showed up for rehearsals. And then uh, later on, of course, Dave Navarro would actually uh, play on the song Oh My God for the End of Days soundtrack back in 1999. And then Spin Magazine wrote a really great article back in 1999 about Axl Rose. And, uh, you know, it talks about his, well, basically what happened to him. At that point, he was like a recluse. Nobody had seen him. And they talked about what was going on over the last couple of years with him and, you know, how he got into music like Nine Inch Nails. One of the interviews was with Lars, and Lars said, I remember late one night Axel was sitting there telling me about this band called Nine Inch Nails. He was saying, this is the coolest thing I've ever heard. And we were all sitting there going, what the fuck is he talking about? He had Nine Inch Nails to support Guns N' Roses in Europe. And I remember hearing how they got booed off the stage but he was there when the rest of us were still listening to Judas Priest. And Joseph Brooks, who was like, he was like an influential uh, you know, LA club DJ, he was a former owner of a record store as well. He said several years ago, Axel told me to go shopping for CDs for him. He gave me his credit card and I bought him stuff like Front 242, Nine Inch Nails, Early Prodigy, all early techno stuff. He was really excited by it. Matt Sorum said that Axel was well versed in what was, in what was new and happening. He was the first person to play me Nine Inch Nails. He said they're gonna be huge. And then Gilby Clark said, basically, Axel said, I want to change the sound of the band. This was around 1994. I want to use more industrial type things. He was really into bands like Nine Inch Nails at the time. And this has been confirmed in numerous interviews where Axel said he doesn't hate everything, uh, referring to that Slash only likes a certain type of music, and that Axel appreciates different types of music, whether it's rap, whether it's techno, industrial, or rock. And, uh, you know, this is sometimes credited as the reason why Guns N' Roses broke up was due to musical differences. And, uh, of course, that was probably a small part of it. Now, let's talk about the actual song itself. I've given you guys the background on, you know, what influenced Axel to perhaps record the song. But let's talk about an interview that Axel actually did with Musician Magazine back in 1992. He brought up uh, 
the song My World. Originally, he revealed that there was only going to be 29 songs on the Illusions records, and then My World just sort of presented itself. And then he said, My World happened when we were sitting around being a bit bored. We had been working on Live and Let Die all night, and it was early morning. I'd been listening to a lot of industrial music, and all of a sudden I said, Hey man, let's do something. Let's see what happens. Let's just make it short and sweet and see what we come up with. In three hours, we wrote and recorded the song. And then the interview followed up by asking, you know, and it refer to your socio-psychotic state of bliss, which to which Axel said, I'll expose a little more of myself. We were also on shrooms. A friend of mine had stuck some mushrooms in my tea and I didn't know it. All of a sudden we were being really mellow, so it was kind of a socio-psychotic state of bliss. And then if you uh, listen to the just before the last verse of the song where Axel says, guess what I'm doing, you can actually hear the click of a lighter and then a big inhale, which sort of insinuates that Axel's using a pipe or some sort of bong. And then in an interview that Axel actually did with Hit Parader magazine back in 1993, he said, we completed My World in three hours. It's something I need to get out of my system, but it's not something I want to base my career or future on. And then he actually was asked in an interview that Axel did with Rip Magazine back in 1992 about what's next for Guns N' Roses. They'd released so much material, what's going to be the next thing? And he briefly touched on My World. He said, but when I did My World, everyone dug it and wanted it on the record. By the next record, I think we can branch out a lot further. I would like to move in a direction where I can be more in touch with life and love, but still remain as strong in terms of exposing ourselves as GNR has always been. And then years later in 2008, Axel would actually go on one of the Guns N' Roses fan sites and basically do an open chat with the fans. So one of the questions he got from the fan from the fans was, what the hell was my world? Laugh out loud, I've always been curious. To which he actually replied, great question and here goes for all you inquisitive minds with a bit you weren't aware of, but here's the real story. Unfinished first run, first dabbling, experimenting all in fun demo that became Duff's favorite song at the time, telling me how he loved to blast it at his house with the iced tea and body count guys before Illusions came out, and before it was decided it was going to be on the record. I wanted to try and develop it and wanted guitars of some kind, but Slash felt, and his words at the record plant, in all seriousness, were, it's perfect, and Slash and Duff were the deciding factor to have it on the album. Eek. Personally, I feel Duff legitimately liked it, but I can't say Slash did in the same way. In fact, I feel he was keenly aware some would take issue with the track and against me, so for him, in that sense, it was perfect. He also added that in his opinion, Duff wasn't aware or part of that and was used unwittingly for support in talking me out of developing it or not including it, which at that time I had no real intention of using as is. Now one may read those uh, answers and say, you know, I don't really believe that Duff would say that My World is his favorite song, or was one of his favorite songs at the time. But in an interview that Duff did back in 2004 promoting Velvet Revolver, he revealed that Axel never wrote any of GNR's music. So if you guys stay with me, I'll get to my point here in a couple seconds. And he basically said Axel made it an Axel thing, but it really wasn't McKagan said. He never wrote any of the music. That was part of the reason it broke up, because we'd play shows and he'd say, here's a song I wrote about dot dot dot, and it would be a song that he had nothing to do with. Rose has yet to finish, of course. That was around the time that Chinese Democracy was still being worked on. And Duff said, I'm not knocking him, McKagan said. We did go through a lot together, and we accomplished a lot together back then. But this is now, and we're having a great time. We hope to do this until we can't do it no more. So following this interview, Duff actually had to retract his statement about Axel not writing any of the songs. So here's what Duff wrote. He basically said that he was taken out of context. It was a misquote. And if you look at some of his past interviews when he's answered Guns N' Roses questions, this response deviated from his normal responses. So what he basically said is, Axel and all the Guns fans, I wholeheartedly apologize and I'm quite embarrassed by this whole episode. I have always looked at the, as the glass is half full when it comes to the amazing things we accomplished and the amazing songs we wrote as a group. My World is still one of my favorite songs. Much respect and love, Duff. Now, one band member who was not a fan of the song was Izzy Stradlin. He talked about how there was one song on the record that I didn't even know was on it until it came out, My World. And he said, I gave it a listen and thought, what the fuck is this? And then, believe it or not, guys, My World was actually covered by another band. So there's a Canadian digital hardcore act called Schizoid. They'd released a 13-track CD of new interpretations of their favorite black metal, punk, and, and industrial metal tracks entitled Covered in Metal. And track number 12 on the actual album was My World by Guns N' Roses. I was able to track down their cover of it, and I've linked to it down below for you guys to go check out. And then there's also a mashup on YouTube of My World uh, with guitars by Buckethead. So I've linked to that down below too. You guys can listen to it. 
And of course, the song has never been performed live by Guns N' Roses. It's one of several songs that have never been performed live by the band. Now, in 2016, LA Weekly, and LA Weekly's done some fantastic reporting on Guns N' Roses. I really recommend reading Art Tavana's pieces that, that he's done. Uh, there was a different author, Nicholas Pell, wrote a, an op-ed in which he, he basically said, My World was a track ahead of its time. Uh, in fact, the actual article is titled Unpopular Opinion. And uh, he talked about how he's not a fan of the song November Rain. Uh, he'd rather listen to the song My World. And he talked about how it was a song ahead of its time, how it gave us a window into what Guns N' Roses would do 20 years after the Illusions records came out. He talked about how the keyboards were straight off Nine Inch Nails, the album Pretty Hate Machine. So I've linked to the article down below. It's definitely worth giving a read. And, you know, let me know if you guys agree with the article. To me, I'm not a huge fan of uh, My World. I pretty much had the same opinion as Izzy did when I heard the song for the first time. But let's see where the song ranks on the Guns N' Roses song list. So there's a number of sites who've done, you know, the, all the, ranking all the Guns N' Roses songs from worst to best. Now, one thing that may surprise a lot of people is that a lot of the lists, of course, ranked it as one of the worst Guns N' Roses songs, but the actual list that Spin.com did ranked it at number 58 out of like 84 songs. The worst song, according to them, was Sympathy for the Devil. Another list had it at number 79. I think that was the top of their list. And then uh, the list that Ultimate Classic Rock did, they just compared the Illusions songs to one another. They didn't look at the entire list of songs that Guns N' Roses has actually done before and of course it was ranked at the top of the list number 30th. They said a bold experiment per perhaps but more of an actual solo track than a true Guns N' Roses tune. So that does it for my look at the Guns N' Roses song My World. I kind of think of this as like a bonus episode. I did Dustin Bones yesterday. I've got another episode coming next Friday. It's going to be a song off Use Your Illusion 1. I'm slowly getting through all the Guns N' Roses songs. I think I've done 11 or 12 songs so far so I've still got like another God, I don't know, 40 or 50 to go. I'm not going to do the Spaghetti Incident songs individually because I did a whole retrospective of the album. But uh, I've got some cool ideas in the works for stuff I want to do. And tomorrow, guys, is going to be a podcast uh, on my channel. So we'll be having a new guest on. Uh, he's got some amazing stories about seeing Guns N' Roses live. I think he's seen them all the way back in, like, 1987. So uh, we're going to be talking about that as well as talking about all the week's news as well as answering your guys' questions as well. So I think it's a 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at Guns N' Roses Daily. I post a lot of exclusive stuff on my Twitter feed, like cool pictures that I don't necessarily post on YouTube. So go check those out. I'll follow you guys back. Thanks for watching, guys, and make sure you subscribe for all things related to Guns N' Roses. Take care.